Hey, here's a tip for you. When you record your audio separate from your video, make sure you don't accidentally erase your audio before you get to edit said video. Otherwise, you'll have to end up reshooting said video with new audio. Yes, it's the Frugal Filmmaker Q&A, the show where you send me questions and I try to answer them. Remember, if you'd like your question read on the show, to send me an email to, you know where, thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com, or you can comment below, or send me a message on Twitter at Frugal Filmmaker. Okay, seeing as how we're running so far behind, let's get right to the questions. The first one comes from email from Anil P, who says, Can you tell us your render settings in Sony Vegas Pro? I use Vegas 13, but I'm still confused with the settings. Well, I sort of have to answer this question with an asterisk, because I used to use the free plugin Video for YouTube, and I'll leave a link below. I've talked about it before. It sort of picks the best render settings for Vegas and renders them for you that way. And that was just sort of a hands-off way of rendering. I actually liked it because I thought the results were just fine. You had three quality settings and the ones I was using for this show seemed to work just fine. So that's what I used. However, ever since getting the dumpster PC, if you recall, which is a computer that uses a big fancy fat graphics card, to help with rendering and preview in Sony Vegas, namely the Radeon 6990. I have to use the main concept AVC codec, which is what renders out to MP4. That is the one that uses the GPU on the card, so that's the one that I use. I can still use video for YouTube, but it typically will take about twice as long as the actual runtime of the video to render, maybe about time and a half. But if I use the main concept encoder, it will run really fast and it'll run just under real time. So I can render a lot faster and save a lot of time that way. I actually tried rendering uh, a typical video file on my laptop using main concept without the GPU assistance and it took five times as long. So the main concept encoder is really good and fast and so that's the one that I'm using. Then I just sort of tweaked the bit rate to what I like. I think I'm rendering at 10,000 max and 8,000 minimum or 6,000 minimum perhaps. Just, it just depends on how big your file you want it to be. I live with a bandwidth cap so I don't like big bloated files of the maximum quality. So I, I sort of have a compromise and I try and do something that doesn't use a ton of bit rate but is a manageable file and doesn't take me too long to upload because I don't want to get to the end of the month and have no bandwidth because I've been uploading all these huge files. That's why I sort of have to quantify my answer because I don't really have an answer for everybody other than, hey, use video for YouTube. It's free, it's a plug-in, it'll do all the hard work for you. But if you have an older video card that uses the Radeon 5 or 6000 series or an NVIDIA uh, 570, I believe, Vegas will take advantage of those cards and allow you to use the GPU to improve your render speed and also your preview. So if you're layering effects, you can actually play it in full resolution without any stuttering, which is also awesome. Mike emails me and says, what type of camera do you use and can you put another lens on it? Secondly, while out in the field shooting, do you use a laptop to store footage so you can shoot longer? Well, as I mentioned recently, I bought a Sony a7 II and it is an interchangeable lens camera, just like the Sony NEX 5N, which is what I used previously. I like interchangeable lens cameras, but yes, I can replace the lens on it. It's a mirrorless camera also, which means you can easily adapt other lenses to it. You just have to get those cheap adapters. Just go to eBay or Amazon and type in Nikon to NEX, for example, or Nikon to A7 II, and you'll get the proper adapter. I do recommend you take a laptop into the field to dump footage. However, I also recommend you have enough SD cards to shoot all of your footage on those cards. So you can still dump them at the end of the day, but I discourage you from having one card, let's say, and then in the middle of the day, dumping it to a laptop and then erasing that one card and then using it again. Why? Well, because if something happens to your computer in the field, such as a hard drive crash, you now have no footage. So to protect yourself, always have your video in at least two places, and then later three. So shoot everything on your cards at the end of the day, then dump it to your laptop or other computer to make sure you have a copy there. And then before you erase those cards, make another copy of the stuff on your laptop and then make another copy after that is my recommendation. So you have three copies uh, of your footage at any given time. And if you go back to my split archive video, you will kind of see how I set that up so I could do that kind of thing. Since I made that video, I also added another hard drive. So I have two copies in my house at all times in two separate locations. And I have an offsite drive that I copy to once a month. I take my archive, I copy it to the offsite drive, and I take the drive offsite, namely to where I work, so I can store it there. So if anything happens here at home, such as the whole place burns down and I lose both drives, I still have my offsite drive. So, Always protect yourself, always have plenty of copies of your footage. I recommend three, at least two. Uh, and always make sure you have enough SD cards. They're cheap. Don't try and save money by skimping on SD cards. Make sure you have plenty of memory cards so you can have everything shot in the field without having to dump anything and erase any cards because I promise you, you're asking for trouble in that scenario where you forget about something or lose track of which cards is what, and as a result, you lose some critical footage. So protect yourself, get plenty of SD cards, and dump to your laptop as well. Next up, we have Gene, or is it John, who says, we newly launched the Shaver Below. Are you interested in reviewing it on YouTube? 
Well, let me think. I don't necessarily need a shaver to shoot a movie. However, it is good for trimming the beards on actors. I sometimes get these weird review requests on YouTube, maybe because there are companies out there that are scraping YouTube titles and finding words like review, so they were just going to spam everybody and ask them to review their products. For example, I'm being asked here to review a razor. Now, I do have a beard that I shave, and I do use a razor. However, I don't really use it for filmmaking. In fact, when I'm making a movie, my beard tends to grow out because I don't want to bother with shaving. So, I'm not going to review your razor, Gene, so don't send me any more review requests because you obviously have no idea what my channel's about. So, quit it. All right, next up we have Gene who says, We are a seller on Amazon. Are you interested in reviewing the Sportive Watch with video? No, I'm not going to review the Sportive Watch. I don't even know what that is. Okay, out of YouTube comments, we have one from Beanie Productions who says, I've noticed in the behind the scenes footage on some feature films I've seen, the boom operator having a dynamic microphone look alike. I'm just wondering if you've ever had experience in using this type of microphone on a boom pole. Well, I have worked on some professional film sets. In fact, I can remember one like it was just yesterday. <laughs> Anyway, I did notice on that set that they did have a dynamic microphone on a boom pole. Namely, it kind of almost looked like a handheld stick mic instead of a shotgun mic, which is how we're all trained or brainwashed into using because of the long throw pattern. You can be farther away from your subject and use a shotgun mic and pick up their dialogue a little more clearly than a dynamic mic, which has sort of a bubble pattern. But I have seen this. I can only really assume that they use this type of microphone when they know they're going to be able to get really close to their actors so they can envelop them in that that pattern opposed to a longer throw pattern. I don't have a dynamic mic and I wouldn't use one to record sound in this way. Maybe a plant mic where you could hide it behind something. I'm not sure, but I personally have never used a dynamic mic at the end of a boom pole. It's always been a shotgun mic. So if there's anybody out there on the interwebs that has used a dynamic mic at the end of a pole, maybe they could share the reason why. I'm just guessing here, but I have seen it. I know they do it. I've seen those behind the scenes videos as well. So I'd be interested to hear your opinion. And finally, we have Omar Aniz, who says, I'd like to see a Q&A with the green screen. Maybe a nice summer day in the background? Well, Omar, as you may or may not know, I'm not a huge fan of chroma key shots, so I'm not going to do a chroma key shot. I really don't like the way they look. If I can at all avoid them, I have used them a little bit in the past, so a little variation instead of just standing in front of a, a green screen and keying in some background that does no way exists behind me. And summer is approaching here in Alaska. It's still a little bit cold. I mean, the snow is mostly melted, uh, but the temperatures are kind of chilly, still around 40 with wind chill. It's probably closer to freezing or a little below, just depending on if the sun is up or down. And the sun, by the way, doesn't go down until about 1.30 a.m. Uh, it's the land of the midnight sun after all, so it is kind of interesting. In fact, the summer rolls around, the sun is not going to go down at all. It's just going to kind of linger at the tops of the hills around the horizon and just sort of circle as the earth turns. And if you want to shoot here in Alaska, you'll have plenty of daylight to do it in the summer. And you'll have not just golden hour, but golden hours. So I apologize that I can't give you a chroma key shot, but how about me in front of a radar station? <laughs> And that's all the questions we had this week. I'd like to thank everyone for writing in. I really appreciate your emails, not only for the questions, but also all the support you give me and all the wonderful compliments. I really appreciate it. Very nice. Please keep those coming. It really helps buoy me up when I find this hard to do sometimes. At any rate, we'll have another Frugal Filmmaker video coming very soon and then another Q&A, hopefully, next Tuesday. See you then.